When it comes to winning a mountain bike world cup this season, here are the facts. Teams do not win mountain bike races. Training doesn't win races. Psychology doesn't win races. Suspension, drive trains and brakes also don't win races. 1.7 in the green! Loris Fergier wins Maribor! French people do. What's up with the Frenchies? I don't know what's up. They're just really good at biking. I think the French downhill community is probably just the strongest in the world right now with so many top French riders. Thibaut, Zaprela, Loris Verge, and I, we're actually from the same club in the south of France, US CAD. You don't have to go internationally to achieve anything or to find competition, and it starts from such a young age. When I was a kid, it was the French uh, domination era. So Nico, Gracia, Barrel, all these kind of guys were flying up there. And for the last few years, I don't know what happened. The French riders are just exploding. It's the fact that it's like the national sport, they're passionate about it, and just the way they are, the way that they, they deliver those emotions in a mountain bike race. Yeah, they're quite a unique race, really, when it comes down to mountain biking. I'd love to blame the baguette for their success, but I don't think that's the real reason. I would not be able to tell you why exactly French people are going fast, but it's a fact, and I'm so proud of all of the other Frenchies out there. Yeah, they're good at it. Bastards. Sorry, no offense to the French in the room. <laughs> we definitely see a lot of young French riders as well doing really well, which probably means that uh, their federation is doing a good job of developing talent and supporting their athletes. Um, you know, when there's one really dominant rider like Pauline in a country like France. Pauline for Ambrovo, three times mountain bike world champion. And there is Loana, the winner of every cross-country Olympic race this year. Loana and Pauline are able to compete against each other quite often, which I think probably makes them both stronger and hungrier uh, when they come onto the world stage. So that could be part of it, but uh, we never know what's going to happen in a season. Let's get going in the Jay. Strong start for Kate Corney. Yeah, I think the starts are really important in mountain biking. Pauline Varane Provo now goes to the front, or does she? Well, Luana fighting back in the early stages. It's really about that kind of short, quick anaerobic power. Ah, uh, yes, power. Specifically, watts per kilo, cycling's ultimate arbiter of efficiency. Mountain biking's version of a lie detector. The power meter. Power meters are kind of new school technology. They've they've really come into vogue like as almost a ubiquitous item on almost every rider's bike. They use it to analyze the power what they have delivered in racing and training. You know, you can really target and train in a super accurate and specific way, and it's also good for preventing overtraining and that kind of thing. So Lecomte takes the lead. Oh, big crash for Rizved. Oh, I hope she's OK. Now pulling for Amprevo on the deck. It's all going on here, then. And now Rebecca McConnell's with her. Listen to the crowds getting behind Luana Lecomte. They're enjoying this. It's a French one-two here. Oh, front wheel! Well, Levy Richards really attacking these descents. Great to see the young British rider. Further back then, Kate Courtney. You know, she is coming back from that injury. Yeah, so I, I broke my arm back in Nomesto. Well, I don't think anything's broken, but I'm in so, so much pain. Honestly, it was a pretty quick healing process, and I was at home. 
also was able to put in good training and not being able to do the full World Cup series this year was a bit of a bummer, but uh, yeah, it happens. And for me, it was just about figuring out how to get back as quickly as possible. Actually, in moments like this, it's very helpful to have data to be able to isolate, okay, where is something missing? Where do I maybe not have the same level that I've had before? And, and maybe where are things better? When I train, the numbers are super important because it's the only thing I have to focus on. My trainer will say, okay, you have to do three hours and the power should be within this range. And then like when I do intervals, everything is based on time with a certain power. Yeah, without power meter, I'm nothing. Data is important. Who doesn't like numbers, right? But where's the old school eye of the tiger ying to all this power meter yang? Some riders really like are obsessed with it. Some use it occasionally, some only for training. Some won't race with it. Data is not, uh, that's not on my radar at all. And I know my body, I know when I wake up and I'm tired, like I've done the HRV on the app before and I don't agree with this course a lot of the time. Some like Kate want to use it all the time. And in fact, this weekend is the first weekend that she won't race with one. And here's Kate Courtney in 17th place. Not the comeback to the World Cup. She would want bar, I would say. Remember, she won here in 2019. It was a perfect weekend for her. Well, McConnell back with Jenny again. Wow. So for Anne Provo now, under pressure from Evie Richards. And there's Evie overtaking Rebecca McConnell to go into third place. Wow, look at that. Well, what a day Evie Richards having. That'll be her best World Cup finish. There's also another school of thought on power meters, which is, you know, that maybe sometimes you get focused more on the power meter and the number than, like, reality, you know? It's really hard to get to that stage, I feel like, where you do just listen to what your body is. I think you're taught for so long to listen to numbers, to watch your weight, to do all this. It feels like it takes a lot of confidence and, like, a lot of years and people, good people around you being like, no, just, like, listen to your body. Loana Lecomte! Lights up Leger, the perfect season continues. Four from four starts this year in cross country Olympic for this woman. And here comes Evie Richards with her best ever cross country Olympic finish. So to summarize, data is valuable. Feel, also valuable. Yet so far this season, if a UCI Mountain Bike World Cup win is the objective, the most important attribute is the rider's ability to parlez vu. The stunning Swiss Alps are our destination for this, though, round four of the series, more specifically, the high alpine resort of Lenzerheide. I really like the track, actually. The first day, I was really struggling with figuring out the flow of the track, but as the week went on, I felt like I got a lot better. Finn Isles, then the Canadian national champion, the next man to make his bid here in Lenzerheide. Qualified ninth, this man. And it's green at split number two by 0.419, then. You're going 70 kilometers an hour. You're braking a lot. It makes the track tricky, so you really got to think. Be aware of, like, where your braking sections are. So that makes it pretty fun and hard. And Isles nails that chicane, or does he? Oh, just as I said, he gets late on the exit. And that mistake will cost him time, and he goes third. Point three two. I'm riding solid, but I could probably go faster than this. Like today, I probably would have been seventh, but I made a mistake. So we get back to the top. Uh, a man who hasn't been outside of the top two in any World Cup race this year. The series leader, the number one player of Thibaut de Prella. And holds the traction through the last s -Bet somehow. So Thibaut de Prella is going to go fastest by nearly a second. That is a massive run here in Lenza Heider. Can anyone respond to that? That was something special. That blew my mind. Louis Bruni then. We saw one crash he had at the World Championships. He actually had another big one on the morning of the race. After Valdisol disappointment, injury in the leg and stuff, I was not even sure to race. Every time I was going through a left turn, I was scared to wash my front end and crash on my leg and I was going slow. So I was talking to Nick, so I was like, man, I think it's not even worth it. I'm just cruising and I can't do anything with my legs. I'm so stiff, I don't play with the ground, I don't play with anything. And so the first day of practice, I, don't, I did not even do track work, didn't really take any risk, didn't try lines, I was just 
trying to feel the flow. And I was not so far with the time. Uh, so I was like, okay, maybe I take the risk to score some points. It will be probably not possible to win, but maybe a top 10. From one fast Frenchman to another, to the four-time world champion, Louis Bruni then, fourth in qualifying, and a man riding actually with a lot of pain in his leg, but it doesn't look like it's slowing him down, Elliot. Close goals and crashes are part of the game, and then you cannot let them slow you down. So it's um, a training you need to push also to have these moments to feel like it's normal. Bruni never stops searching up on 1.4. That's insane. How has he pulled that time out? Oh my goodness, nearly a second between splits one and two. Ah, oh, for the four-time world champ then. Spent the early part of this week in hospital, can you believe? And he's recovered for this. Pedals around that turn. So here comes Bruni. Is he going to beat Timo the Prella? Bruni takes the lead by 0.17. Ah, oh, the times keep coming down here in Lenza Heider. Look what Bruni's just done. What a race we got here. With three riders already atop the standings and one still left to go, we've reached the point in the episode where you're probably wishing you had paid more attention in French class. Fastest qualified, the last man down the mountain today, the winner in Maribor. It's Loris Vergier. Fastest in the seat sections, fastest in the fast sections. So Louis Bruni will be holding his breath in the bottom now. Ah, oh, 0.41 for him to find now. Interested, is he not attacking hard enough? Two-time junior world champion takes it back green by 600. Oh my goodness, Elliot, which way is this one going to go? Is it going to be his second World Cup win of the year or will it be Bruni? Here he comes, it's Fazier! Look at the time! Fazier wins Lenza Heider! Oh my goodness, the last man down taking the win! Being so close to the win felt like a win, so. Season saved, kind of. <laughs> when you think about it, you have three guys from the same area, we race the same track for training, and we just one, two, three. But I think it's the first time we have four French guys on the podium and I was like, if we have to sing one time good the national anthem, it's now. So, why exactly are the French so fast? After a thorough examination... The conclusion is that it's equal amounts of no one knows. And it doesn't matter. They just are. Say la vie. <laughs> 